Okay, everybody. So like Krista said, I am um, Heather Legrone. I um, help run the disaster recovery programs for the state of Texas. Wow. Somebody take a picture of me up here in front of this so I can send it to my mom. This is pretty. Wow. <laughs> Hi, mom. Awesome. Okay. So the state of Texas is a repeat customer for disaster recovery funds for the state of Texas. I'm going to get that off there, all right, because it's distracting me. All right, so you might call us a super user even in the state of Texas. Um, we are currently operating a $14 billion allocation for disasters that date all the way back to 2005. Um, we have done grants as small as $5 million in that portfolio and as big as $5 billion. A little bit of false advertising here in this because I've got 20 minutes demystifying CDBGDR. We're going to give it a go. You do have the slides, and the slides are kind of a 101 of CDBGDR. How many people have successfully spent CDBGDR in your recoveries? Yeah? Uh, okay. All right. The 101 slides are going to be available for y'all to look back on. But little bit about a little bit about the general land office you don't care unless you're in Texas um, we are the oldest state agency we administer things like the beaches and the permanent school fund the Alamo is something that we administer and disaster recovery on behalf of the state I get to be part of the disaster recovery program there's all the details about our various funding sources. Um, guys, the disaster recovery program at HUD is not a real program. It is a program attached to um, what one of my colleagues at HUD calls the chassis of the CDBG program. So in some cases, that means CDBG light. In other cases, it means plus, 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 plus. And one would think that a program with no rules would be an easy program to implement. That is not the case. Um, like I told you, $14 billion and all the things, that's nine different events that we're responding to. Those nine different events have over 30 Federal Register notices that we have to comply with to spend those dollars. With 2015, I can do one thing. With 2016, I can't do it again. But with 2017, when Harvey hit, we get to do it all over again. So it's a whole lot of back and forth. And this is hard. The CDBG funds are hard. And yes, they absolutely defy logic. They are definitely not how the program would be designed if you were designing it because no one designed it. Remember, we're, we're working off of another program a Sunny Skies program, a program that is actually set out um, to be an annual allocation. So if you didn't get it for this year, you didn't do it this year, you do it next year. Disaster recovery is a one-off. It's a supplemental allocation and it comes out with a particular purpose and a particular event problem that you're trying to solve. So with all of that being said, it makes sense that it's a little bit hard to do. It takes a minute to do this. <laughs> Um, and you need to be saying this from day one. You need to be understanding this from day one. These are recovery dollars. This is not response. Never once have I plucked anybody off of a roof. My job is all about paperwork. I am bureaucrat of all bureaucrats. Um, what I do is I make sure the file tells the story in getting our monies moved and out the door. So if you're looking at this timeline, you're going to have a disaster. It can take you as much as 12 months to get to that FEMA threshold to get a disaster declaration. Somebody told you yesterday, and I think, no, I don't remember, sorry. Um, somebody told you yesterday that um, your FEMA declaration is extremely important. Getting people to apply for those FEMA individual assistance as well as public assistance and SBA for the businesses is extremely critical. It literally has a multiplier effect. Your CDBG supplemental funds, when HUD decides how much to share with your community or your state, are going to be geared off of the damages that you reported to FEMA and the SBA. 
So for that first 12 months, you could just be waiting on a declaration. Our Department of Emergency Management, TDM, is out doing that superhero stuff. They're plucking people off of roofs. They are putting on the tarps. They are putting up the barriers on the roads. That's what's happening. Meanwhile, I'm sitting high and dry, I've been accused of it, in Austin, waiting for the money to hit, okay? Then, you know, insurance is coming around. You're waiting on Holworth for insurance. I thought that was great. Um, and the SBA stuff starts to happen. Then you're immediately gonna run out of contractors. Everybody's looking for a contractor. Everybody's looking to hire somebody. Everybody's gonna be using the very same firms that you're gonna need to be using when you start your programs. Prices are gonna go up, supplies are gonna go down. Ideally, within that first 12 months, you're gonna also get that congressional appropriation. There's no money in the budget for this program. Um, this actually takes an act of Congress to happen. Congress is gonna appropriate funds, HUD's gonna decide of that money how much of it is coming to you, and then they're gonna write that federal register. So far for Texas, they've written 30 of them. But they're gonna write a federal register that says here's the amount of money you're getting, state of Texas in my case, go forth and do good things, recover. That's 12 months in, sometimes. Sometimes they're quicker, but between getting that declaration, getting that Federal Register notice in, and then you have to write an action plan. You have to tell HUD how you're gonna use those funds. Part of your action plan is a needs assessment. It's like, duh, we, have a, we had an event. But you gotta tell them about it. And you gotta come up with the ratios of how that event worked out in your, in your communities. You're gonna tell them, I had this much housing need. Of that housing need, this part was associated with single family housing. This part was associated with multifamily housing. I need this for economic development. Infrastructure is here. We wanna do um, planning activities to support the following things. And then you kind of start doing this proration in the use of funds. I told you we have a $14 billion allocation. I'm gonna talk mostly about 2017 because that's how I came to know Jen. Um, and that's our biggest grant that we're working on right now. With that 2017 allocation, we started through the process of divvying up those dollars and deciding this much to infrastructure and this much to housing, so far and so, so on. Our event was in August, so six year anniversary, yay. Um, our event was in August. It took until February for us. Congress was great. Congress allocated September the 13th and gave us our allocation. It was a Friday the 13th. They gave us our allocation, um, and then the Federal Register notice came out the middle of February for those dollars. Then it became time to write an action plan. Our action plan got drafted, written, and it was approved about four and a half, five months later. HUD gave us, I want to say it was 60 days to, to write that action plan and get it through the whole public process and everything, and then they took their 60 days to approve it. Yay, press releases go out. The public thinks that somebody showed up at the state capitol with a truckload of money. There's no money. We just start taking applications. We start figuring out who's going to be eligible. Lo and behold, it takes a community four months to submit an application to tell us what their infrastructure projects are. Taking 10 to 15,000 homeowner applications is a very difficult process. You do a needs assessment to identify within your programs who you want to serve. So you're starting into your pile of applications. We've gotten better. It's an electronic pile now, but it used to be a pile. Um, you're starting through those applications and you're starting to decide who's eligible. And then at that same time as HUD was looking at that action plan, we were hiring builders. We were hiring support staff. When Hurricane Harvey hit us, we had a staff of about 35, 40. We are now a staff of 250. Um, and most of those people were hired on the first half of that six years, not the last half of that six years. 
So we've got all these new hands we're trying to teach and train and all that's going on. And we're getting to know our partners. We bring in vendors to help us with staff hog type things to, to run the programs with us. Not a single house has been built and we haven't issued a contract yet. Y'all, the best thing that you can do is set expectations along the way. This is absolutely, and it's so cliche, it is a marathon. There is no sprint here. This does not happen fast. There's very little you can do to speed it up. Um, we've tried. Um, we're pretty good at it. but we're And we get a little better each time. But there's certain things that have to be done in sequence that you just have to do. So then our action plan gets approved, and we actually start building stuff. And this is what we build it on. This is what HUD says we can do, long-term, um, disaster relief, recovery, all the things. We have national objectives. We have to spend the majority of our funds to benefit low to moderate income folks. Anybody making 80% of the area median income or below qualifies as that. You can do that on an indiv individual basis or on an area basis. You can eliminate slum and blight. This is fixing something that's not safe, doesn't look good, um, has um, problems that you want to solve. You're fixing, you're fixing it. Got too many things to hold. All right, you're fixing it and um, you're, you're getting it ready to do something with. You are not fixing it under that national objective. And then this is a good one, addressing an urgent need. That's where a lot of disasters go to. Eligible activities, you can do just about anything with CDBG dollars. That's why the money got put here in the first place. Um, once upon a time, a mentor of mine told me that CDBG is one of the most flexible programs in the, net, in the federal portfolio. And believe it or not, it is. I know some of you doubt that. There are very few things that you can't do. You cannot do general conduct of government. You can't build a city hall. You can't build a courthouse. An emergency operations center? Nope. A point of distribution, which before I got into this business, I had no idea what that was. That's where you, a big parking lot, basically, where you bring the ice and the, the meals that you hand out, the MREs, that kind of thing. Um, it might be where you're take, doing your intake for your um, IA and PA type things can't build those you can build shelters again flexibility here if you build a shelter that also houses your city hall then you can pay for the sheltering part of that building so there are opportunities within the regulations or lack thereof that can benefit you so there are definitely ways to use these dollars the way that you need to use them I told you that we got, or maybe I didn't, $5 billion for Hurricane Harvey. We did the math and we needed $125 billion. So $5 billion sounds like a whole lot of money until you start trying to spread it across a $125 billion need. Um, zeros don't really help. Um, you're still spending five against 125 of need. So um, you're going through that process. Everybody has an opinion. Everybody has an idea. You need to scale your programs to the dollars that you're receiving. We got a $5 million grant. We didn't try to do housing and economic development and planning and infrastructure. We simply did infrastructure with it. When we got a $5 billion allocation, we built a $5 billion program. And it had all of those things in it. And we also built a computer system to support it. All of those zeros are tough to track on a spreadsheet. So we actually went through a process to do all of those things with that with a system. I'm going to fast forward because I want you all to ask questions if you need to. Okay, eligible, eligible, eligible. All right, so absolutely is attainable. With our Hurricane Harvey program, we have built over 12,000 housing units since 2017. And if, if you're doing the math in your head, yes, that is seven and a half houses a day and 
$1.5 million out the door every single day. And we've only spent 63% of our money so far. And technically, we are a slow spender in HUD's eyes. So um, there is still no Department of Common Sense. I loved that. That was awesome. I'm going to keep using that one. Um, it doesn't make sense. There are too many layers to CDBG, DR, um, and it is definitely not a program designed for disaster recovery at its, be at its beginning, at its inception. So long run, short run. It is what we have to work with. You can absolutely use CDBG DR for recovery. You can reach out to us and let us help you. We have been doing disaster recovery in the state of, in the state of Texas since 2005. If it can be done, we have tried it. If it can't be done, we have tried it. If you shouldn't do it, we have tried it. There are definite opportunities with you in your CDBG money. I would suggest that you consider all the other pots of money that are available and at your use as you're considering the use of your CDBG funds. They do come with some hoops and some loops that you have to get through. No one is ever going to be eligible for all of the possibilities in your, in your portfolio of applications. You need to tease out or triage those ineligible applicants for CDBG and focus your other funding sources on those folks and let CDBG cover the ones that are eligible for your CDBG dollars. Leverage it, make it work together. And again, telling every single time, this is a marathon. Talk to your boss, talk to your elected officials, talk to the press, talk to your communities that you're dealing with. It does defy logic, it is gonna take a minute no, you're probably not going to be in your house by Christmas. You're not going to be in your house next Christmas either, probably. So keeping that on the forefront, it really is the case that this does absolutely take a lot of time to do. The general public outside of this room does not understand that, nor will they believe you when it happens. So I'm going to close with this because Chris is like giving me the hook. Um, build your programs as flexible as you can. When you write your action plan, don't put it in there if HUD doesn't make you, because you're just gonna want to amend it later. And build your programs themselves to have that the executive director can make changes if necessary based on the circumstances. I sign a memo and we keep moving and we help somebody instead of having to do a six month action plan amendment. Y'all let me know, like I said, if it's ours, if we have it, you're welcome to it. Find and replace Texas for your name, and you've got a whole program off the shelf. Let us know how we can be helpful.